Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk about using events to have the UI react to something happening in the game, such as a player character taking damage, like you see here, and creating the text above the player. So in another video I had all of that information and code uh, put into one damageable character script, but in this video we'll talk about using Unity events to separate the different functions, so that the character will take the damage, invoke an event and then that event sends the damage off to your ui manager in order to react by creating the damage text above a character or a enemy so this video is going to be just talking a lot about code but hopefully it'll make sense and you'll see how the new way of doing things actually using a unity event is a much better way to do this so here is the original damageable character script I had. You can see I declare a game object for the health text up here. So the health text, when it appears, it just shows the text for a minute and then it goes away. So that is what you see here. It's the same game object, whether it's the UI manager or the character creating that. But one of the main differences in the original is that when the character takes damage, rather than sending that off to some UI manager, the damageable character itself is getting reference to the scene canvas and then creating a instance of that health text on top of the canvas and then whenever the character takes damage it's going to create an instance of the health text on the canvas but above the position where the character is in the game world so that's when you do uh, character main world to screen point and you take the game objects transform position that's how you get the text to appear exactly where the character is but in this case the character itself knows about the ui and the character also is setting the exact text element that's going to appear so this bit right here knowing about the canvas and knowing the game object health text that's going to appear above each character whenever they take damage are just elements of the code that can be off put to something like a UI manager. So in the updated version, you can see I created a UI manager. So this could be a mono behavior component that just goes along with the game manager as a list of different components, but I'm choosing to use a scriptable object since a scriptable object is really easy to just drag and drop different versions of it into the slot in the inspector where you need that component. So if I take a look at my game manager, you can see I'll have one of these in the game as a singleton. It's only the game manager that's a singleton, and then it has references to whichever level manager, player manager, and UI manager you want to use for the game. So whenever we use a game manager, I'm going to have one version of each of these other sub-manager scripts. And if I double click on the UI manager scriptable object, you can see that this is a asset inside of the project assets folder itself. So I could create different versions of this to have different health text prefabs to use to spawn the text above the player and a myriad of other settings I'd probably add later on. So the important things here about the events is that we are adding a function to be called whenever this event gets invoked, the character events .character damaged event. So we just add this method call by plus equals. And when the script is disabled, if it was to ever be disabled, minus equals just to make sure that this is completely removed from the event. And you can see that this function being called is just the same stuff to create an instance of the health text to position its canvas rect transform to the same screen position as the character transform that took the damage to set its parent to the canvas and then to change its text to the amount of damage that was taken. So that's the same bit that's over here. Now you can also see here that whenever this character gets damage taken, I have to make sure that the scene canvas is set. Otherwise I can find an instance of that in the current scene. So there's probably other ways to do this, but one advantage of having the UI manager have one single reference to the canvas is that I don't need to do that for every single damageable character having their own reference to the canvas. So this is just more efficient. Once I find it, it can be used over and over again for anything to do with the UI across the scene in the game. So about the Unity event over here in character events, you can see I'm declaring this as a Unity action. So it's essentially like a Unity event if you were just to do the same thing. Uh, let's see, public static Unity event, float game object, character damaged to. It would be almost the same thing here. Uh, you still can add 
functions to be called when this event gets invoked by plus equals or plus minus to remove it, except that a unity event can also be set in the inspector where a unity action cannot, it can only be set in code. But in this case, I'm setting unity action because I only ever intend for this to be added to or removed from in code after the game starts rather than in the editor. So that's why I'm using unity action instead of unity event. Uh, you could still technically just rename this as a unity event and functionally speaking, there wouldn't really be any difference. It's, it's just that this won't show up in the inspector like a unity event would. So to show a version of the unity event in the inspector, just so you know what I'm talking about, let's see, let me open up my character object here. And you'll see down here, damageable character script has a couple unity events. So the difference here is that I'm setting these in the editor using the inspector, uh, because I know that this player controller is always going to exist alongside the damageable character. So just dragging it and setting it here to call the functions back rather than the plus equals minus equals in the code itself works well because this is a prefab object that's always going to have those two components. So we're sure that those are going to go together and therefore we can set the events up in the inspector. So the other thing to note here is that this is a static unity action, uh, which means that there's only going to be one reference to this in the game and it's kind of like a global variable in a sense. So in the damageable character script now, I'm invoking that unity action. You can see I pass along the variables. So you can see here character events dot character damaged. If I hover over it, it's static, which means we're referring to that one specific unity action. There won't be two in the game. It's static. So there'll only be one version of this field in your game active at any time. So when you're talking about a static field, there's only one of them. Even if you were to create multiple instances of a class, it would still be the same exact character damaged action. There'll only ever be one because it's a static field. So what that means is that when we invoke that character damaged, it's always going to be that same static one. And in the UI manager, when we add our method to be called on that unity action, it's always going to be that same static field. So the advantage of using a unity action or unity event here is that the damageable character and the UI manager never need to specifically know anything about each other. It's just the UI manager is responding to an event and the damageable character is calling the event. So as long as the damageable character can invoke the event passing along the right data and the UI manager has a function to receive it, they don't need to know anything about each other. And so that's going to help decouple your code. So the UI doesn't really need to know any specific things about the characters in the game and the characters don't need to know anything about the UI. We just need to set up some unity actions so that in some level they can communicate with each other. So since it's relevant, I'll show the health text script here. I haven't changed it in any way whatsoever. So this is just text that appears on the screen. You can see that over a certain period of time, It'll change the alpha on the color. It'll also change the position of the text, making it float upwards a little bit. So it floats upwards, the alpha fades out over time. So that gives it a little animation. Let's go back and show that again. So you can see, it's just pretty simple here. It fades away above the player and just destroys itself after the animation has played. But yeah, in all of this code, which I'm gonna put a link to in the description if you wanna download this and try it out yourself, it's just taking some of the functions that really don't belong in a character itself to handle, but rather moving that off to some kind of global manager script that can handle creating things on the UI, such as text appearing on the screen, floating away, and reacting to events like this. So I just wanted to show that much better way of having the UI of your game react somehow to the players acting inside of your game world. So I've been Chris, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future Unity content.